So uh, let's try this problem. Okay, so I guess I would start first by putting my thumb into the board. So um, the force represents the thumb, and this means into the board. Good. Um, but That's a good start. But then B is pointing up, so I guess it's kind of like this. Yeah, so there's lots of different places you can be pointing your palm, but you're right, we want to have our palm pointing up. Good. So we know that QB points to the left. Let's write that down. Thumb for the force pointing into the board, palm for B pointing up. Make sure our fingers are, make sure the thumb's still in the same direction it is, so the fingertips now are pointing to the left. Okay, good. So we know that QB perpendicular is pointing to the left. Again, we shouldn't be focusing on this problem and getting our fingertips to pointing in the right direction. We should focus on making our palm and our thumb pointing in the right direction, and then the fingertips will automatically tell us what Q times V is going to be. All right, good. Now, suppose I tell you that V is to the right. Does that mean we have a positive test charge or a negative test charge? For this same problem. It means we have a um, negative test charge. Good. How would we work that out on paper? Well, first of all, um, what would V perpendicular be in this case? V perpendicular would be zero? Oh, oh sorry. No, V perpendicular would be equal to V. Yeah. V perpendicular means the component of V that is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Well, here the entire vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So this also means V perpendicular. Again, that's going to be the standard case where the velocity is already perpendicular to V. All right. Um, then we have to explain how could it be that QV perpendicular is opposite to V perpendicular? Well, the only way that could be is if the test charge is negative. All right. So now we know that we have dealing with a negative test charge. All right, now I made this problem easier than it would probably be on the test because I split it up into two parts. If this was a problem on the test, they would probably just tell you, um, it would just give you this information. And they would ask you, is Q positive or negative based on this information? And then you would have to say to yourself, well, um, gee, the first thing I can do here is I can figure out QV perpendicular. Uh, and we figured out that QV perpendicular here would have to be to the left. And then since they already told me that V perpendicular was to the right, and this is opposite to that, I would know that Q is negative. All right, so I made this a little easier because I already I asked you this as a sub-question. But if, even if they had just asked you for the test charge, you would first have to figure out what QV perpendicular is before you, and then compare that to V perpendicular before you can figure out the test charge. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's try this. We have an electron moving in a magnetic field, and we want to know the force on that electron. Okay. Um, so we know that V is pointing into the board, um, and Q is negatively charged. Because it's an electron. Good. Uh huh. Um, so V not or V perpendicular is equal to V. Yeah, this vector is already perpendicular to V. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as the component that's perpendicular to V. Uh -huh. So V not, I mean, I keep saying V not, V perpendicular Q is pointing out of the board. When we multiply by the negative charge, the direction reverses. So this will be pointing out of the board, which is a dot. Good. Mm -hmm. um, so we point our fingers out of the board. Represent Q V perpendicular. Good. And we know that V is this way. Pointing down. Pointing down. So we have our palm pointing down. Good. So F is pointing to the right. 
So then f would be pointing to the right. I should write that down before we forget it. Good, excellent. Now, many students will get this wrong because they won't, re uh, they won't think that the electron is negative. And so they're going to have their fingers pointing into the board. Uh, so again, you have to really watch out for that on the exam. You watch out for negative charges because in that case, your fingers should be pointing opposite to the velocity, not in the direction of the velocity. Good. By the way, you can see why the, your hand is excellent here, because we're dealing with three things that are all perpendicular to each other. Well, your fingertips, your palm, and your thumb all point perpendicular to each other. So that's why we can use right hand rule for magnetism, because this is a, a context where we're dealing with things that are perpendicular to each other. Now remember that moving charges can feel magnetic forces, but something else that can feel a magnetic force is a current carrying wire, because that's got a bunch of moving charges. And you're even more likely to see that on the exam. So let's see how we would deal with that. For example, we might have here a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. And we want to figure out what the force is on this current carrying wire from the magnetic field. Well, um, we know here that, well, which way would you say the charges are moving? Yeah. And do we consider them to be positive or negative charges? Positive. Positive. Remember that regardless of what the actual moving charges is, the conventional current is positive charges. The conventional current is positive charges. So we think of the current as a movement of positive charges. Well, that means that the direction of Q times V is the same as the direction of the current. We don't need to reverse this because this is positive charges already. So when you're dealing with a current, you can just point your fingertips in the direction of the current. You don't need to bother with this QV business. Um, and again, I guess what we really want is the component of the current that is perpendicular to B. Although 99% of the time, that'll be the whole current that's perpendicular, except maybe on a couple hard homework problems. But just for completeness, we want the component of the current that's perpendicular to B here. All right, so for moving charges, you would use this. But for current, you can just use this, and we don't need to think separately about this. So this should be easier, because we're not going to have to work out the Q business. Well, let, let's go through then, how would we do this problem? OK, um, so we know that I is pointing out to the pointer finger of F. Good. One more thing. What direction is I perpendicular in here? I perpendicular is, well, B is pointing out, is pointing into the board, excuse right. me. Um, so I perpendicular is equal to I. Right. That's it. Usually, be, this is already perpendicular to this. Okay, and then I interrupted you. It sounded like you were on the right track with the right hand rule. So, what should, how okay. should we do that? So, I perpendicular is pointing up. Right. Um. So, and we want our palm to face into the board. Right. So, F is to the left. Right. Making sure that our fingers are still pointing up. And for B, our palm should be pointing into the board, so our thumb should be to the left. So there'll be a magnetic force pushing this to the left. Mm -hmm. So by the way, if this is not anchored, it's going to start accelerating to the left, or moving to the left if it's starting from, from rest. Obviously, forces can cause acceleration and motion. We're not going to focus on that too much today, mm -hmm. um, but um, this could actually start moving because of this force, or at least accelerating. All right, so this is how we'll deal with the case of a current, which actually you'll see more than just a, a separate charge. Just point your fingertips in the direction of I perpendicular. So what does this symbol stand for again? Um, that stands for the current that's perpendicular to, um, to B. Yeah, this is the component of the current that is perpendicular to B. And what does this stand for? That is, um, you mean B perpendicular? Yeah. B perpendicular is the component of the velocity vector that is perpendicular to B. That's exactly right. Good. OK. Um, just to warn you again, you're likely to see um, this is a very popular version of the right hand rule, but there are other ones that are used as well. Okay. Um, but you don't need to use the same right hand rule as your TA is using. You just have to use one that gives you the right answer. Um, one thing I can point out is all of these could be pushed down. All of these could be pushed down in the sense that this could be your finger, this could be your palm, and this could be your thumb. And I could push them down again. This could be your thumb, 
this could be your finger, and this could be your palm. So that's one reason why lots of people tend to use different right hand rules, because there are lots of things that work. But the best thing is just to have one and stick with it. Okay. Um, so I kind of lost what I had here originally. But, uh, what I have on the board is I think pretty much what they use in your textbook anyway. Okay. Something else to keep in mind is, like I said, some instructors like to use a different right hand rule where you, cur where you curl your fingers. I find students make more mistakes that way. So we just keep our fingers straight. Yeah. 